Don't go too deep. Ask me some shallow questions. Ask me a child's question. I have one. Okay, very good. The little girl next door, her dog was just killed by a car. She's grieving. What would you say to her? I would leave her alone to grieve. I would not be in too much of a hurry to say something. Sometimes we cause much more trouble wanting to say something to alleviate grief. And by doing that, we are showing that grief is, uh, should be cut short. It's not good. But it's great to grieve. Sometimes it's necessary, important to grieve. It's also healing. Something gets, something is, we, whoever grieves knows in that moment it's a very private affair, a deeply private affair. Maybe for the first time you want to be absolutely alone and enjoy this aloneness. Sometimes I've had the privilege of going to funerals where maybe a young person has been shot or something like that, and many young people go to this funeral to look at the corpse of a young person their own age, 13 years old, lying in that box, unmoving. Maybe their first opportunity to look at death, to look at a body so still, and they themselves become still. I call it the darshan of death itself. And it's a very private moment, because many of these young people, their minds are constantly into what's going to happen next, and all oh, this weekend, and we're going to rave, and we're going to do, and we're going to do, and they're constantly in a state of some agitation, in a state of some excitement. And this is a wonderful opportunity. My own children, when my eldest son died, I said, come, let's go. You have to go and visit this place to see the body of your brother. And they said, no, Dada. I said, no, no, I'm not going to force you to go, but I'll encourage you to go and to take a look. And so that they came of their own volition. They came and they looked, and this outpouring came. Yes. And I didn't try to stop them. I said, no, it's important for you to grieve, to have this moment, because we don't know when another one will come, another opportunity. This is a great opportunity to be alone, feel that grief. And when you're emptied of grief, then the grief is over. So I would not want to find something. I know many people are itching to say something like, never mind, darling, you know, you know like, you'll get another one. <laughs> Bad news. We say sometimes the most inappropriate thing, trying to help. Yes. You see? Yes. Never mind, darling, you know, I'm going to get you a goldfish next week. Mm -hmm. It's the most inappropriate thing. Better stay out of it and let them grieve and empty themselves of grief. Yes, this is what I would say. Actually, it's a very good question to ask, because over my life I've seen it, where someone rubs your shoulder, takes you away, puts a Coca-Cola in your hand and says, hey, come on, let's go for a walk, to distract you from grief. I would say, no, be very much in that moment of grief and grief. If it takes you all day, all week, all month, allow it. It's a friend. It's also an expression of grace to grieve, and grieve entirely, wholeheartedly. Cry buckets of tears if that's what's to come. Be emptied of it. And something is deeply alive in this grief. Yes. Thank you. You are welcome. Mm -hmm.